Let's move on now to reference coordinates for the Rotate tool. We have the same options as we do for the Move tool. So we can choose Rotate and choose some reference coordinate system, such as View, World, or Local. Let's choose Local. If we select an object and rotate it in local space, we'll see that the Rotate Gizmo is not necessarily aligned with the world. It's aligned with the selected object, or in this case, a group. The values in the transform type in fields down here all read zero, just as they do when we move an object in local space. If we switch to world coordinates, then we see the actual rotation values of the object. Now, this can be a bit disconcerting. In local mode, those rotation values always read as zero, and you can still rotate in whatever direction you want, but just like with the move tool, Local coordinate system is kind of a fake temporary reference point. And if I turn it back to local, the fact that it always shows values of zero, unless we're actively rotating something, should be a dead giveaway that something strange is going on here. I don't recommend using local mode if you can help it. It's got a lot of problems, not the least of which is something called gimbal lock, when the rotational axes actually overlap and you can't rotate in the direction you need to. But you can easily visualize the true rotations of any object using a coordinate system called Gimbal. That's what I recommend for rotations in most cases. It allows us to visualize how the three rotation axes interact. I'll switch the Rotate tool over to Gimbal Coordinate System. And in Gimbal mode, if I rotate around the red X axis, I don't see anything unusual. Everything looks normal. I'll undo that with Control Z. If I rotate around the blue Z axis, again, nothing unusual there. Everything looks just as I would expect. There's no changes to the gizmo itself. The whole orb is rotating as a unit. However, if I click and drag and rotate around the green Y axis, then we see something that we might not expect. The red X axis is sticking to the y-axis. It's rotating as I rotate y, but the z-axis is not rotating. It's staying put. And if I bring that red x-axis down far enough, it'll overlap with the blue z-axis, and that's the condition known as gimbal lock. Here I'm intentionally creating a bad situation. And you don't want this to happen, but at least we can see that it's happening. If we did this in local mode, we wouldn't know that we were getting a gimbal lock situation. In gimbal coordinate system, when you rotate around one of these three axes, you can see what's going on, and you can see what's actually being recorded in the transform data and in the animation. All right, I'll undo that with Control-Z. Whereas if you're in any other mode, such as world or local coordinates, and you just innocently rotate around one axis, what you'll find is that your animation is rotating around two or even three axes. And that in turn can easily result in very unexpected animated rotations where objects spin around completely uncontrolled in crazy directions. So gimbal coordinate space is really the most helpful because it actually shows you what's really going on and it will hopefully prevent you from getting into some dire situations. We'll look at gimbal mode in more detail later in the course when we get to hierarchies and rigging. That's a summary of the key coordinate systems you'll want to get familiar with right away. Primarily, you have view, local, and gimbal reference coordinate systems.